Hello everyone, now in this video, I will teach you one project with multiple applications just like you can control multiple appliances using Google Assistant. You can automate your appliances by turning them on automatically as soon as you enter into the room. You can get notifications if anyone enters your room secretly and even buzz a buzzer for intrusion detection. You can monitor various parameters just like temperature, humidity, CO2 concentration, sound intensity, light intensity, etc. So these are some qualities of one single project which we are going to make in this video. I have made some teasers and uploaded onto my channel to just let you know what variety of projects you can do with this single board. Now it's up to you that how you can combine all these components and make something innovative out of this. So let's get started. So let's just see what this project includes. So this project includes ESP8266 Twilly development board or we can say a Node MCU board as a central controller of our project. ESP becomes the first priority for my IoT related projects as it has a great community support. Secondly, it also works with the Arduino firmware so we can have multiple example codes to get started with our projects. Secondly, we have four 5 volt relays to switch four appliances. I have used this 330 ohm resistor and BC547 transistor to drive these relays. The reason of using the transistor is just to increase the current for driving our relays. Then we have one servo motor. Now why I have used this servo that I will let you know in the second part. Further we have DHT11 sensor to monitor temperature and humidity of the room. This module includes one microcontroller and a capacitive sensor in it. That sensor is sensitive to both temperature and humidity which is processed by this inbuilt microcontroller. That processed data is read by our ESP board along with its dedicated library. We also have four analog sensors which can sense sound, motion, gas and light intensity. As we have only single analog pin in ESP12 board, I have used this analog multiplexer module to interface multiple sensors. This module will take two digital pins as input to select up to four analog sensors. So we need to have these many components and one PCB for this project. Now I have designed this PCB online at easyeda.com. On this, you can easily design the PCB by just inserting the required components and making the connections. I have made this in a two layer format. After making the design, save it in a Gerber file format. If you want to get the Gerber file or this project, just let me know in the comments below. After that, I have ordered 10 of these PCBs from the website called jlcpcb.com, a company that provides premium quality PCBs at very reasonable price. To order PCBs, just go to jlcpcb.com and make an account here. After making an account, log into that account. After that, click on quote now button. Here, upload your Gerber file that you have just downloaded. Select the number of PCBs, then select the color of the masking you want for your PCB. That's it. Complete the order by making the payment and wait for the PCBs to arrive at your doorstep. Give JLC PCB a try to make your projects look neat and well arranged. One by one, I have shouldered all the components on this PCB. For ESP2662 board and for the multiplexer module, I have used this female headers so that I can reuse them in my next project. After shouldering all the components, it will look something like this. If you want to make connections on your own, then the connection of all the components I use are something like this. Now let's start with the logic used in our project. First we will learn how to control multiple appliances using Google Assistant and also monitoring census data over internet and for that the process is first we will ask a Google Assistant on our smartphone to switch on fan. That command will be given to IFTTT server. IFTTT stands for if this then that. This is a great platform to merge two services by making an applet. We will learn how to make an applet in a while. 
basically IFTTT need to have one condition and one action. If the condition is satisfied, then the particular action will be performed. For example, in our case, I have given the condition as if my Google Assistant listens to turn on fan, then perform an action of sending data one to fan feed of my Adafruit MQTT broker. So this kind of applets you can make in IFTTT.com. Coming back to the process, when the condition is satisfied, the data will be sent to Adafruit MQTT broker. Now let's see how MQTT works. MQTT stands for Message Query Telemetry Transport, which has two major components, broker and client. Broker is regarded as a server and clients are nothing but our microcontroller ports. Here, one more term comes as topics. Topics can be regarded as a particular folder on the whole server. Let's understand MQTT with one example. Suppose we have three clients A, B and C. Two clients B and C are subscribed to a topic called temperature on the MQTT broker. Now if the client A publishes the data on the temperature, for example, 22.5, then that same data is sent to everyone subscribed to the temperature topic. The broker can be a local broker that works within the range of a Wi-Fi router or it can be a cloud-based broker that can work from anywhere in the world. The one which we are using is a cloud-based server so that we can send and receive data from anywhere in this world. Let's get back to the process. So in Adafruit MQTT, topics are regarded as feeds. Here we have created a feed called fan. Now our ESP board, which is acting as MQTT client, is already subscribed to the feed called fan. So any data change in that feed will be received by our ESP board. As the data received is one, the relay which is connected to the ESP board will be turned on and the fan which is attached to the relay will eventually turn on. For monitoring sensors on internet, we have attached several sensors to an ESP board with the help of the multiplexer module. The data of all the sensors is sent to different different feeds on our same MQTT broker with an interval of 20 seconds. Now we can easily observe the data through MQTT dashboard on our laptop or our smartphone. So this is the process through which we can control appliances using Google Assistant and also monitor sensors data from anywhere in this world. Let's see how to implement this using our ESP board in Arduino. First of all, go to the website called io.adafruit.com. Make an account here. This website provides us a free MQTT broker on which we can create up to 10 feeds. After making an account, again go to io.adafruit.com, then you will observe this page. Click on Actions and create new dashboard. Give a random name and description for your understanding. After creating, go inside that dashboard and click on the plus icon on the right corner. Here, first we will select a toggle button as we need to just turn on and off the appliances. After that, we need to create feed name, which is nothing but the topic which we discussed earlier. So I will create feed as relay one. Likewise, I will create feeds for all other appliances. So I created four feeds for each relays. Now I will add another for sensor monitoring. In a free account, we can create only 10 feeds if we create more than 10, it will show an error. Now we will subscribe a first button to relay one feed. Click on next step. Now here we need to define what data we need to send when the button is on and what data to send when the button is off. So for that, I'm sending one for on and I'm sending zero for off. Then click on create block. Similarly, we will create different switches and will subscribe to the respective feeds. Now for sensor, we need to monitor the value. So we will select the gauge this time and subscribe to the topic called CO2. Here we need to define the range of values to show and need to label it according to the parameters we are monitoring. So likewise, we will do it for all other sensors. After creating all this, we will click on this green gear icon 
and arrange all the blocks properly. So this all setup we need to do on the Adafruit MQTT broker side. Rest of the work need to be done on the Arduino coding side and of course on IFTTT. Let's jump to the coding of our ASP board. First of all, you need to download this Adafruit MQTT library and the DST11 library whose link is available in the description below. So download that and install it into your Arduino. After that, open up this code whose link is also available in the description below. I have made this code for controlling appliances as well as monitoring sensors data. So let's understand this code. First of all, declaration of all necessary libraries for interfacing ESP266, Adafruit MQTT client and DST11 sensor module. After that, I have defined all the pins according to the purpose which is mentioned in the comments. After that, we need to give the credentials of a Wi-Fi router or a mobile hotspot as our ESP require internet connection to talk to the Adafruit server. Then we need to provide details of our Adafruit MQTT server. Here you just need to change the username and key which you can get from the Adafruit account. Go to io.adafruit.com, click on the yellow key icon. Here you will get your username and unique AIO key. After that, some necessary declaration for MQTT client which we don't need to change. Moving ahead, here we have to name the feeds which we need to subscribe and we need to publish. I will show you how to write this by writing one feed for both publish and subscribe. For publish, we will first write adafruit underscore mqtt underscore publish space. Here you need to mention one variable. So I will write it as light for light sensor is equal to adafruit underscore mqtt underscore publish into circular bracket address of mqtt comma aio underscore username double inverted comma. Now here we need to mention the feed name which we can find from our Adafruit account. For that, go to your Adafruit account, click on the gear icon and click on this question mark icon of the blog whose field name you want to know. In my case, I will click on the question icon of light. Here I will copy the string slash feeds slash light and paste it in this double inverted commas of the code. Then bracket close and semicolon. This is how we can make a variable to publish to any feed. Now similarly, you can make a variable for subscribing to any feed. Just write adafruit underscore mqtt underscore subscribe space again a variable name. In my case, it is light1 is equal to adafruit underscore mqtt underscore subscribe into the bracket address of mqtt comma eio underscore username into semicolon here also you need to mention the feed name which you can get through the same method. Now this is how you can create a variable for both publish and subscribe. After that defining DHT type as DHT11 and some necessary things for DHT sensors. After that in the void setup I have defined the inputs and outputs. After that Wi-Fi.begin function for establishing connections to our router, DHT.begin function to establish connection with DHT sensor. After that going inside the loop, first of all MQTT.connect function will be executed in which ESP board will try to establish connection with the MQTT broker. I have just used this buzzer just to give feedback about the connections. Like if the board is establishing a connection, it will buzz with a delay of 200 millisecond. And as soon as it makes the connection, it will make a long buzz of 2 seconds. Hearing the buzzer, we come to know that a connection is perfectly established. Let's see this buzzer in action. So after establishing the connections, we are monitoring the feeds whom we subscribe for 20 seconds which is defined here if an editor comes to our subscribe topics. And after 20 seconds, we are publishing the data of our sensor to the respected feeds. Here important thing to note is the data sending and receiving is in the string format. Now to convert that string into integer, we are using a function called ATOI that is ASCII to integer which converts the data received 
to an integer data type, which we can use to turn on and off the appliances. For publishing, we are selecting different sensors by giving different signal to S0 and S1 pin of multiplexer module. For first, both are low, then for the second, high, low, then low, high, and for the fourth, both are high. Now let's just upload the code and see it in action. Wait, we haven't yet configured IFTTT. For that, first install IFTTT on your smartphone and sign in with your Google account. Then go to last menu, my applets. Now click on that plus sign on the top right corner. Here, first we need to provide condition for that we are going to use Google Assistant. Then we will click on say a simple phrase. In this, we need to add the statement which we are going to say after OK Google. Just like turn on light one. Then we can also add some optional statements if we want to. After that, we also need to mention that what Google Assistant should say in response. So I'll write OK turning on light one. After that, click OK. Now we need to give a command to perform when Google Assistant listens to this statement. For that, we'll select the Adafruit service. Click on send data to Adafruit IO. Select the feed on which you need to send the data and write the data to be sent. In our case, it is one. Click on OK, then finish. Likewise, we'll create another applet for turning off the light. Thus, we will write the data to save as zero. Likewise, we can create other feeds for all other appliances. We can even add multiple tasks with single statement. Like, we can turn off all the appliances by saying, OK Google, turn off everything. For this, you need to create multiple applets, all of which will have similar phrase. For example, I have created multiple applets which has similar condition that is turn off everything but all of them has different actions so what will happen is all appliances will be turned off by saying this single sentence this is the task to be performed on your IFTTT side now just make sure that the Google account you used for your IFTTT is the same account you used for your Google assistant now for that go to Google app on your smartphone and switch to the Google account which you have used at the time of login in the IFTTT. Now long press your home button and activate your Google Assistant. Now ask for anything you want. If both Google accounts are same then only it will work. Okay, so everything is done. Now let's see it in action. I have uploaded the code and inserted the ESP board in the PCB. Let's power up the board. After long buzz of buzzer, we are ready to go. Great, so it's perfectly working. Now let's have a look over the census data. For that, you just need to go to io.adafruit.com and you can observe the data on do your dashboard.
Now I have installed this project at Best ATL Ahmedabad. Let me tell you brief about this type of ATL labs. Here ATL stands for Atal Tinkering Lab, which is an Indian government initiative under which 2500 such labs are set up across India inside school premises. And this Best ATL is one of 10 Intel powered ATLs. The question is, are this kind of lab open for all? Well, yes, all you have to do is search for ATL labs on Niti Aayog's website and contact the school, tell them that you want to contribute as a mentor. For more details about this ATL labs, you can message on the Facebook page of Best ATL whose link is available in the description below. So yeah, this is it about the part 1 and in the part 2, I will let you know why and how I interface the servo motor with this and I will also let you know how to get the real-time notifications on your smartphone. So wait for the next part and give big thumbs up if you really love this project. <laughs> Time for some giveaways. I will be giving away these PCBs to 4 of my viewers in the part 1 and other 4 in the part 2. To get those PCBs, you just need to comment down what best you can make using this PCBs or we can say using this project. What other applications you can think which can be implemented using this board. Just comment your ideas in the comment box. Best 4 will get those PCBs. Remember, you need to be subscriber of my channel. So ending this video here, subscribe my channel if you want to learn more innovative projects in automation, IoT and electronics. Wait for the next video until then explore, learn, share with me Techie SMS.